What's up, everybody? <clears throat> Welcome to my recent episode of my R&B review. I hope everyone had a good 4th of July, even though for the people who do celebrate 4th of July, that was seeing Wakanda last week. Y- y'all know who y'all are, but <laughs> I'm just joking around. Um, the album I'm about to review tonight is Earth, Wind, and Fires. I believe this is actually their fourth. Yeah, their fourth studio album, Head to the Sky, released in 1973 under Columbia Records. Um, Singles albums known for are Evil and Keep Your Head to the Sky, and producer is Joseph Wissert, who was known for producing for Boss Gags, um, the Jay Gillis Band, and so on. It's about time. I'm so glad I'm finally reviewing this album, because... Yeah, I'm definitely going to review some Earth, Wind & Fire albums. Um, this one, Open Our Eyes, That's the Way of the World, Gratitude and Spirit. Um, I have, I used to have Open Our Eyes, but I sold it to get some extra cash. I'm not too worried about it because I, I see that album a lot. So if I see it, I'm going to just get it and I'll just review it. I'll just review it and shit like that. I'm still going to review it regardless, but still. And... The only reason why I don't, I'm not going to review all at all because I actually want to get the physical copy of that album to review it. And I used to have I Am as well, but I actually misplaced it somewhere. And I'm also going to review the Emotions Flowers album and Denise Williams' This Is Nisi. So, yeah, st- stay tuned on that. But, okay, um, the. The members of Earth, Wind, and Fire. Well, the main members are Philip Bailey, Verdine White, and Maurice White. Uh, rest in peace to Maurice White, by the way. Um, how Earth, Wind, and Fire got together was 1969. Maurice White, he was known as like a session drummer for Chess Records, and he would play drum for people like Billy Stewart, Etta James, and of course his best known contribution as drums was Fontella ba- Bass with the song Rescue Me. You guys have heard that song before. Um, so he joined two of his friends like Wade Flemings and Don Whitehand and stuff like that. And they made like a songwriting team and things of that nature like composing commercials and the in their area, stuff like that. The three fan, they got they got their like contract from Capitol. They liked what they heard, and they started calling themselves the Salty Peppers. And they had like a regional hit called La La Time. Then fast forward to 1970, Renee White, who was Maurice White's cousin, he left Chicago like, and he wanted to join. He wanted like to to join the band to be like their bassist and shit like that and so Maurice you know he was sending out demo tapes and you know they were talking and talking and they were like looking for record labels and so they signed to Warner Brothers and so the first incarceration consists of like uh, Maurice, Vernon, um, Whitehead, Flemings, Sherry Scott, Michael Beal, um, Michael Beale on guitarist, Chet Washington on tennis saxophone, Alex Thomas on trombonist, and Yakov Van Israel on percussionist. So yeah, and so he rena- Maurice White renamed the group Earth, Wind, and Fire because he was inspired by his astrology chart and shit like that. Cause you know, um, he was a Sagittarius, and he just picked like Earth, Wind, and of course Fire. Because like, um. For Sagittarius, like you know, in the northern. Excuse me, excuse me. Um. Yeah, excuse me one second. Yeah, cause I, I had to jot that down and stuff like that just to make sure I was not missing anything and shit like that. But yeah, fast forward to 1971, they dropped their debut album, Earth, Wind, and Fire. I have to keep it real with y'all. I've heard the early Earth, Wind & Fire albums, like, but it's been a while since I've heard them, so I'm gonna definitely re-listen to them and stuff like that, but, 
Yeah, um, Earth, Wind, and Fire, that was released in 1971. Uh, it got, like, a lot of critical acclaim for the time. And so they quickly followed that up with The Need of Love, released the same year. And also, that same year, they did a soundtrack for the classic black exploitation film, Sweet Sweetback's Badass Song and shit like that. That's crazy. They dropped two albums in the soundtrack in their debut year. That's fucking crazy. Um, then fast forward to 1972. Maurice White, she added um, Helena Davis and stuff like that to the group. And she replaced um, just Cleves uh, and stuff like that. From And just Cleves was part of the Friends of Distinction. Yeah, I know the history is long and stuff like that, but it just bear with me. We're almost getting there. And so he later added like Ronnie Laws on the, the flute and sax, um, Roland Batista on rhythm guitars, Larry Dunn on keyboarders, dope keyboards by the way, Ralph Johnson on percussionist, and of course he added a vocalist from Denver named Philip Bailey. Philip Bailey, definitely one of the greatest singers all time in my opinion um that falsetto though so Warner Brothers they were having like a lot of time trouble promoting like this new incarceration and stuff like that so because you gotta also remember um that same time they Charles White and the Watts 103rd Street Rhythms Band you guys probably heard that name before. They made that song, Express Yourself. Um, they were another, like, funk band that was there, shit like that. So, yeah. So, next thing you know, with, they hooked up with Clive Davis and stuff like that. And he was interested in the group. And that same year, 1972, um, they dropped their first album on Columbia called the last last days in time and stuff like that which i need to definitely get my hands on that cause i've seen that album recently in stores so i'll definitely cop that album pretty soon um and so fast forward to 1973 they were definitely working on this album right here um yeah i l always love this album cover and shit like Definitely has that like happiness album cover, like that 70s, like a spirituality, things of that nature. Like, look at this shit. I miss when we're in like fucking liner notes for like this and shit, you know? And yeah, okay, so. And this personnel in this in this album is Maurice White on vocal drums and kalimba, Vernon White on vocals, bass and percussion, Philip Bailey on vocals, congas percussion, Larry Dunn clarinet, piano, organ, Ralph Johnson drums, percussion, Jessica Cleese on vocals, Al McKay on guitar, sitar, percussion, Angie Woolfolks on soprano, sax and flute, and Johnny Graham on guitar and percussion. Okay. That way we can uh, clarify everything, who's on this project, so, yeah. So this album has one, two, three, four, six songs, not, not, too, not too long, but yeah, you'll see. Track number one, track number one is Evil, definitely my favorite song off this project. Um, I love how it started off, like, it has that dark, eerie kind of like avant-garde style and shit like that they it's actually a rework of this song called bad tune that was on their debut album their self-titled eponymous debut album and it was an instrumental and shit like that so i thought that was pretty interesting um evil what i got from evil is basically um how we all have bad intentions, no matter how much we try to hide it and things of that nature. So, I thought that was a pretty interesting song. Love the instrumentation on that. Definitely a classic, in my opinion. Track number two, Keep Your Head to the Sky, which was just playing in the background. 
one of my all-time favorite Earth, Wind & Fire songs, classic song. Basically, what I got from that song is just like, it's like a motivational song, kind of like a gospel-influenced motivation song, how you just need to keep your head forward, you got this, don't worry about it. Yeah, very dope song, love that song. All my Jay-Z fans should know about that song, by the way. Um, next song is Build Your Nest. Very funky tune and things of that nature. Um, yeah, that's a very cool song and shit like that. I love, I love the bass that was playing on that. It definitely has that car wash, that summertime feel to it and stuff. Very dope song. Track number four, The World's A Masquerade. Um, this song right here is definitely a soft rock kind of fusion kind of song. It reminds me of something I would definitely hear from something, um, what, what was that group called? Uh, what was that group? I think it's The Brighter Shade of Darkness. Definitely reminds me of some shit like that. Just the direction they were going with. Um, yeah, very cool song. Kind of like I love the lush production that was on it and the very slow thing like that. Very dope. Um, track next track is Clover. Definitely um, a slept on song. Basically, it's just a love song to this girl named Clover. The lyrics are short, but yeah. Then track number six, um, Zanzibar. Yeah, definitely a nice way to end off the album. It's like a Latin influenced song and things of that nature. And basically, um, it is the like longest song of course on the project. And it was believe it or not, this is actually like where like if you like really listen to how the voice the verses just slowly builds up and things like that. It like sounds like a parade or some shit like that. Very dope song. And yeah, that's all the songs off this project. Yeah, I know the album the album was short, but yeah. It's it's still a very good album. Um very good album and things of that nature. This pretty much started like their you can put pretty much say like their break is like their breakthrough album. Um this was really like their first album where like the vocals were really prominent. Because if you listen to the, the earlier stuff, it was like more like down tempo and like like more bass heavy, if you want to say the least. Where like this album, like the vocals were definitely taking over. Um, they were like using like more instruments. It wasn't just focused on horn arrangements and things like that. Um, yeah, what else about this album? Yeah, there's not really that much to really say about Head to the Sky. Like, it's just a very perfect early 70s soul album. It definitely captures that sound very well. And the best is yet to come. Yes, and of course, that's the world's a masquerade playing in the background. And yeah, very dope album. Um, they actually re-released this album a couple of times, and I think the most recent one was, I think 2001 or sometime in the mid 2000s. But yeah, if you're an Earth, Wind, and Fire fan, highly recommended. And that's all the time I have. Stay tuned for more. Peace.